What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. You see the title and the thumbnail in today's video. My name is Christian Corey. So without further ado, let's get into it. First topic on today's list involves the Atlanta Braves outfielder Marcel Ozuna. He has some charges that were made against him on Saturday night in Atlanta. It says according to Fulton County arrest records, Ozuna's specific charges were aggravated assault, strangulation, and battery, a family violence. That is how they are labeling his actions as. The Braves issued this statement regarding the 30-year-old outfielder. Quote, we've learned of Marcel Ozuna's arrest earlier this evening and immediately informed the commissioner's office. The Braves fully support Major League Baseball's policy on domestic violence, which stresses the fullest that our society cannot and will not tolerate domestic violence in any form. Until the investigation is complete, we will have no further comment and all inquiries into the matters should be referred to the office of the commissioner. Major League Baseball and the Players Union have had a joint policy against domestic violence since the year of 2015. So this is very, very bad news for the Braves losing Marcel Ozuna. But aside from the Braves losing Ozuna and his skills on the field, this is even worse news for the person who did in fact bring forth these allegations, if they are in fact true about Marcel Ozuna. You never want to see this. The article did not specify at who brought forth these allegations. It did mention family, but I do not know if this is his wife, is this his girlfriend. Hopefully there's no kids involved. You do not want another Felipe Vasquez incident, that's for sure. You know, let's hope that no kids are involved at the minimum. And let's hope Marcelo Zuna's victim is okay following these allegations. I will keep an eye on this story for sure. Next topic on the list is Roman Quinn left today's game in Tampa Bay against the Rays with a left Achilles heel injury. This is not good. He might be out for the rest of the season. Quinn suffered a serious, almost certainly season-ending left Achilles tendon injury rounding third base in the fifth inning of Saturday's 5-3 loss to the Rays at Tropicana Field. He dropped to the turf, but he got up and hobbled the final few feet to home on his right leg. Quinn then collapsed again. Minutes later, Phillies manager Joe Girardi and assistant athletic trainer carried him off the field. The Phillies have placed Quinn on the 60-day injured list on Sunday. They selected the contract of outfielder Travis Jankowski from AAA to take his place on the roster. It doesn't look good, Girardi said on Saturday. I don't expect to get any good news from the MRI. So it looks like Rowan Quinn is done for the year. And that's not great. Quinn is a very valuable piece to that Phillies team. He can play multiple positions, pretty good glove, not too shabby with the stick, but this is not good news for the Phillies, and that is not what you want to hear right now when you're in a very, very tight pennant race in that NL Eastern Division with the Miracle Mets, it seems like, uh, for the first couple of months here. The article also noted that, you know, teams shake up their 40-man roster every offseason, so it would not be surprising to see Philadelphia non-tender Quinn, who is out of options and will be eligible for a salary arbitration for the first time. So it looks like they're going to non-tender him if he's not coming back. So that's not good if you're the Phillies. A pretty valuable piece. I mean, a platoon guy, I would say so. I feel like that's how they use him the most. Nothing special, really. He's played 28 games. He played a lot of games, almost half as much as he did um, for the past two seasons. And that's including 2019 with the 162 uh, game mark. I'm not sure if he was injured in 2019 at all. I do not remember. No home runs, two RBIs, batting a buck 73, slugging 288. Not great numbers for Quinn. Again, a platoon guy, more defensively. A nice bat at times. I'm sure he has power. I can always remember him hitting a home run wherever I see him play uh, with the Phillies, especially down in spring training. Why that comes to mind, I don't know, but that's just me as an outsider looking in. I'm sure Luke, Phillies hot stove, We'll have a lot more to say on this injury. Uh, he'll know a lot more when it comes to how valuable Quinn is for the Phillies or how invaluable Quinn has been for the Phillies lately. But not great news overall. You don't want to see this guy go down. But unfortunately, that is the case. He will be out for the rest of the season for the Phillies being Roman Quinn. Third thing on the list involves the Detroit Tigers and the New York Yankees three-game weekend set that just wrapped up from Detroit. Yes, great news for the Tigers. Very bad news for the Yankees, the Bronx Bombers, but my Tigers 
just swept the big bad Bronx Bombers in Detroit. And why is this significant? Well, I wasn't even aware about this. I was not aware. Honestly, I was not aware that this was a thing. I knew the Tigers swept them, but I did not know the significance of the sweep. Let's just go back a little bit here. The Tigers won the first game on Friday, 3-2 to two in a walk-off. Won the next game, 6-1, to one, and won today's game, just wrapped up a couple minutes ago, an afternoon game in Detroit, Sunday, 6-2 to two against the Yankees. But what is so significant about this series sweep by the Tigers? Well, it was the first time that the Tigers have swept the New York Yankees in a three-game series in Motown since the opening of Comerica Park back in the year of 2000. How about that? That's crazy. I did not know that. I thought the Tigers swept the Yankees before at home, I thought surely all those times they were winning in 2011, 12, 13, 14, that's really interesting. That's why baseball is a numbers game. You know, Garrett Cole, five innings in his start, and you know, Casey Mize went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Spencer Turnbull retired 10 Yankees in a row yesterday, and Tarek Skubal topped them both with six scoreless innings and eight strikeouts in Detroit's 6-2 win today, Sunday. So that's really great for the Tigers. Bad news for the Yankees, but there is a significant story there. Last topic on the list today is, as I said, baseball is a game of numbers, and baseball keeps track of those numbers very, 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 very closely. And, well, a historic milestone was just passed today in Minnesota via Josh Donaldson, and it was not a personal stat of Donaldson's. It was not a personal stat of the Minnesota Twins. And it really wasn't a stat anybody, if they're being honest with themselves, thought was a thing or being kept track of. Certainly, I didn't think baseball would care about this, but apparently they do. Josh Donaldson scored MLB's two millionth run today in Minnesota against the Royals to make the game one to nothing. The run came via a bloop ground rule double from Nelson Cruz, a right-handed batter in Minnesota, making the game one to nothing twins, as I said, in the bottom of the first inning. So how about that historic milestone for not only Josh Donaldson, not only the Minnesota Twins, but Major League Baseball. That is really great. Baseball's been around for a very, very long time. And finally, here in 2021, they have scored their two millionth run. How about that? All right, guys, that's all I got for today's video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below your thoughts on the stuff we talked about here today. Share the video. Tell your friends about these videos and my channel. I would appreciate it on the road to 700. And as always, I'll catch you later.